there guys welcome to a new video if you are new here my name is Kim I'm a third year fifth grade teacher in West Michigan and typically on this channel I post mostly vlogs but today I am sharing a ginormous middle grade book haul. I am so excited about this. My students are so excited about this and a lot of my students actually watch my YouTube videos as well. So I know that a bunch of them are probably going to watch this and already make decisions about some of the books they want to check out, which is very exciting. So I was blessed to have so, so many books donated to my classroom library off of my Amazon wish list. I'm going to pop up on the screen right now, a bunch of names of people who donated to my classroom library. I'm sure I'm missing somebody, but I tried to get everybody from their little notes and every once in a while Amazon will get a mix up and not send a note with a gift or whatever but I'm trying to include everyone so thank you so incredibly much to everyone who donated it was so thoughtful and my students are so 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 excited and then also I placed a humongous ginormous order on first book which is one of my absolute favorite places to order books from they have extremely discounted books that teachers can buy I believe it's only if you work at a title one school I'm not entirely sure about that but I know that you do have to meet some certain qualifications in order to be able to order books from them because their books are so heavily discounted. But the moral of the story is there are a lot of books. So I've never really done a book haul like this before. I've been watching a lot of like book tubers lately and I've been feeling really inspired. I even put on like a vampy lip even though I feel like I haven't worn like real lip products in a while because usually people only see like this much of me. So if it ends up on my teeth at some point, like we're just gonna pretend that's not happening. Or if it looks like crazy and is like up on what's, I don't know, we're just gonna ignore it. We're just gonna ignore it. Let's all just make the decision to ignore what's going on here. So anyways, I have so many books to share with you guys. I'm gonna try to really quickly overview the book as I'm sharing it the best I can. Most of these books I have not read before though. So anywho, let's go ahead and jump in. And I have so many books. Ah! So the first category, is all of these horror or suspense or thriller type of books. My students this year are absolutely obsessed with thrillers and suspense and anything scary. And it's interesting because every year that I've taught, I've had a small group of students who have been interested in those types of books. But this year, it is seriously the majority of my students and they just cannot get enough. So the first book that I wanna share with you is this one that I have highly anticipated reading. This is called Small Spaces. So this one is just a creepy, it says hair raising tale that readers won't soon forget. So I know that my students will absolutely love this. Another Another thing I really like about this book is the main character is 11 years old and my students are between 9 to 11 depending on when their birthdays fall and anywho I'm really excited about this one and I actually received the second book in this series as well which is called Dead Voices so if the students end up enjoying this one then they could move on to that one and I always think it's fun to have series books in my classroom library. Speaking of series books, we have the next book. This one is called City of Ghosts, so another ghost type story. So this is a really interesting looking ghost story. The main character's name is Cass, and it says that she drowned, but she doesn't like to think about it. And now she can kind of see the veil torn away between the living and the dead. And so she kind of is able to go between those two worlds. And this one just seems so creepy. even like the cover of this oh my gosh I absolutely love that and I actually watched the book trailer for this one a few times because I just thought it was so interesting this has a really really good book trailer so definitely one that my students are going to want to read and this one has a sequel as well the sequel is called Tunnel of Bones the next book that I got is called The Strangers this is by Margaret Peterson Haddix who is an author that I really enjoy Margaret Peterson Haddix is the same author who wrote the Among the Hidden series which I really enjoyed the first book from. I will say I didn't enjoy the entire series. I actually didn't make it through the whole series for that one, but I have done Among the Hidden as one of my read aloud books with my students in the past, and the students always really, really enjoy that one. It's very interesting. So if you haven't read that one before, I highly recommend it. The kids always enjoy it, and that's one that I recommend to my students quite a bit. And so I was excited to see this one from Margaret Peterson Haddix. This one sounds so creepy and interesting. This might be one of the first ones that I need to read for myself. This is about a few different siblings and they're home one night and from my understanding, I think they're watching the news and on the news, there's a report of three 
children who were kidnapped and they have the same names and the same birthdays as th these three siblings. And then their mom mysteriously takes off on a work trip and so they're trying to figure out what is going on and why it is that these strangers have the same names and birthdays and everything that they do. So this one sounds super creepy and I already know that I'm a fan of Margaret Peterson Haddix's writing and so I'm really excited about this one. I have very high expectations for it so I'm hoping it lives up to them. This next book is absolutely beautiful. It is a nice hardcover book, which I always love and the students really enjoy as well. This one is called Scary Stories for Young Foxes, and this one is a Newbery Honor book. The inside cover of this book just is so creepy, so I'm just gonna read this to you. It says, the haunted season has arrived in the antler wood. No fox kit is safe. Seven little foxes in the twisted antler wood, listening to stories much later than they should. The first flees the teacher with dark, gooey eyes. The second from six sisters whose tongues tell lies. The third escapes a woman who peels foxes' skins. The fourth slinks away from the Golga thrush's grin. Not sure what a Golga thrush is, but I bet you find out in here. <laughs> the fifth wets the ground when he smells Mr. Scratch. The sixth turns tail when the paw finds its match. The seventh little fox in the wood, all alone, facing down a ghost beneath branches of bone. One little fox stays the whole night through, but can she make it to the end? Better yet, can you? <laughs> So this one just sounds so, so good. And I just absolutely love the cover of this. And I know the cover doesn't matter, but also it does, you know. The students always love when something has a really beautiful cover, something that they gravitate towards. So I'm super excited about this one. That should be a great book to read. The next book is another series. So the first book in the series is called Winter House. And this one, I really don't know too much about, to be completely honest. I believe, okay, so just from quickly reading the back, it looks like this is about an orphan who goes to live in a peculiar hotel. So it's kind of ominous, kind of creepy, and it says that it's not long before she, the main character, Elizabeth, it's not long before she locates a magical book of puzzles that will unlock a mystery involving Norbridge and its sinister family. So just a fun kind of creepy book with this winter house. Um, it doesn't want to focus. There we go. So actually a couple people have recommended this one to me on my previous video. So I'm excited about this one. And then the second one in the series is called The Secrets of Winter House. So this one should be a great series to try. And it looks like there is a third book in the series as well. So if my students really end up liking these ones, then we'll definitely have to get that third one as well. The next book is called Ghost Squad. And this is about, I believe it's a brother and a sister in this book. And there's some witchery and some some spells and ghosts and just all sorts of fun things. This one is sure to be a good one on the back. It just says, be prepared, respect the dead, always have a cat, which makes me think that maybe there's some kind of funnier aspects to this as well, some humor in here. And I just absolutely, again, love this cover. I think it looks just so beautiful with kind of the ghosts creeping out by those two kids on their bikes. So really excited about that one. The next book that I picked up is A Tale Dark and Grim. And actually I think this one was donated off of my Amazon wish list. now that I'm thinking about it. This one it says was a New York Times bestseller. And I actually heard of this one through BookTube. I can't remember whose video I heard this in, so I apologize. So this one is just kind of like a twisted tale of Hansel and Gretel. And so this one should be a great one. I absolutely love twisted tales. I think they're super fun and I'm really excited to read this one. I know my students will be as well. This next book is called Spirit Hunters and this was a 2017 release. And this book is one that I've been meaning to pick up for a while from my local library and I haven't actually read it yet, but I'm excited to do so. This is one that's kind of just a haunted house type story. So I believe the main character is moving into a new house I want to say. Let's see if I can figure it out based on the back. Yeah, so she's moving into a new house and she just has these weird feelings about the house. She starts to just feel like something is awry here in this house. So this is sure to be a really good one. The next book is called The Bone Garden and this is about a main character named Ariel, which like how beautiful is that? Ariel instead of Ariel. It's 
I-R-R-E-E-L-L-E, -E -L -L -E, Ariel. So that's beautiful just in itself, not that it really matters, but wow, amazing. <laughs> and this is just a very fantastical type book. It says that she is fearing that she's not quite real. So she must be grappling with that. So that one sounds really interesting. The next book is called The Night Gardener. And this is one that has a really awesome kind of holographic cover. How fun is that? And this one, it says, is about two abandoned Irish siblings who travel to work as servants at a creepy, crumbling English manor house. But the house and its inhabitants are not quite what they seem. So this one is sure to be one that will kind of keep you on the edge of your seat. It looks really good. And then the last one for this creepy horror thriller section is The Peculiar Incident on Shady Street. And this one is about a girl named Tessa Woodward, and it says she isn't exactly thrilled to move from her home in sunny Florida to rainy, cold Chicago. But homesickness turns into icy fear when unexplainable things start happening in her new home. Things like flickering lights, mysterious drawings appearing out of nowhere, and a crackling noise she can feel in her bones. So another just kind of creepy house one. Really excited about this. I always enjoy those haunted house type books, and this is another one that my students are sure to really enjoy. All right, so I think those were all of the horror and thriller suspense type books. I, again, picked out a lot of these and ordered a lot of these because my students have really been interested in this genre, but I also ordered and was sent a ton of other books as well. So let me go grab another pile and bring it on over here, which means I need to move this one out of the way as well. Here we go. Ah! <laughs> okay, so while we're on the theme of fantasy books, because of course all of the ones that I just shared with you were all fantastical type books, I thought I would share some other fantasy books that aren't like thrillers or creepy or anything like that. So the first set of books that I got were books two through five in the Emily Winsnap series. One of my students read the first Emily Winsnap book and really enjoyed it and requested that I got some more for our classroom library. So of course when a child requests a book, we have to get the book. The Emily Winsnap series has been around for quite a a while and I just recently read it I think a few years ago but the first book I really enjoyed and I think I read through the first three I want to say but I haven't read past that they're really quick reads and they're about a girl named Emily who ends up being a mermaid and just kind of her tales and tales <laughs> get it she's a really really likable character and these books are a lot of fun so I know that student is gonna be so excited to have those in our classroom library so the next book that I have to share is called love sugar magic a Dash of Trouble. The main character, her name is Lenora. I think she goes by Leo though, I believe. And her family owns a bakery and they are setting up for the Dia de los Muertos festival in their town. I believe they live in Texas, yes. And so anyways, she finds out though that her family is a family of witches and she's just discovering her own powers as well. So I thought this would be a really cute one to add to my classroom library. The next books are series books from the Mercy Watch in series. These are definitely like younger books, but my kids really, really enjoy them. They're very nostalgic for a lot of my kids. And we were missing these two books from the series. These are books four and six. And so they requested that we add these so we can complete the series. These are by Kate DiCamillo. And these are just really loved books in my classroom library. We have the rest of the series and the kids really enjoy reading these. So I had to get those ones. So the next book that I got is the book Pax. I actually thrifted this one and it's in great condition it has I forget what you call it when the pages are like uneven like that there's a word for it but I don't remember what it's called and of course you can't really see it right now do you know what I'm talking about where they're like I don't know there's a word for that I don't know what it is maybe you guys know if you do leave it in a comment below it's one of those books that's been on my TBR list my to be read list for a really long time but I just haven't read it yet and I don't really know why <laughs> but it is an award winner I believe this one came out in like 2017 let me double check I know it's been a few years. Uh, 2016, that's pretty close. And then kind of going on that theme, I have this next book, which is called A Wolf Called Wander. And of course this is a wolf, not a fox, but I feel like a lot of times if kids enjoy reading about foxes, they'll probably enjoy reading about wolves as well. And this one just looks absolutely beautiful. 
I believe this one is actually based on a true story, but then it's through the wolves perspective, which of course makes it more fantastical, but this one looks awesome. I'm excited to read that. And then the last book in this section is called The Land of Roar. I know absolutely nothing about this book except for it was recommended to me on Amazon and I said, hey, that looks awesome. Add it to the wish list. And so that's what I did. I wasn't able to find a book trailer about this book, so I'm kind of going into this one blind. Let me quickly read the back and see if I can figure out what this one's about or maybe the inside jacket. Okay, so this one is about an imaginary world that a brother and sister had made up when they were little. And then as they get older, they end up having to actually travel into this world that they thought was just make-believe to rescue their grandfather. So this one sounds awesome. I'm really, really excited to read this. And hopefully they'll come out with a book trailer soon. I don't know if this one is new maybe. I feel like usually there's book trailers on like every book. Yeah, okay, this one's 2019. Usually if the publisher doesn't come up with a book trailer, I feel like usually a lot of times I'll see ones from like teachers or students or stuff like that. But yeah, I didn't find one on that book. So maybe soon, maybe my students will have to make one. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, now I have a ton of graphic novels to share with you. So the first one is called Measuring Up. This one just looks absolutely adorable. This is about a 12 year old main character. Interesting, I didn't even know that could happen. My camera just stopped filming because it said I'd been filming for too long. I didn't even know that was a thing that could happen. So anyways, I must be talking too much. Maybe I need to speed it up a little bit. So basically, Cece has just moved from Taiwan to Seattle and she's really missing her grandmother. And so she wants to be able to visit her grandmother for her birthday, but of course, plane tickets are really, really expensive. And so Cece makes this great plan to win this baking competition so that she'll be able to earn the money to go visit her grandmother for her grandmother's 70th birthday. So this one just looks absolutely adorable. The illustrations are gorgeous in this graphic novel. It's more of like the comic book style versus some of the graphic novels that I have in my classroom library are more like doodles. Doesn't want to focus. Here we go. But yeah, it just looks absolutely adorable. I'm really excited to add this one to my library. My kids are going to love this. Another book that has been highly anticipated in my classroom library is The Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Deep End book. This is book number 13, no, book number 15 already in this series. My kids love Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, so of course we had to get the newest one. This one I actually picked up from First Book. It does have the little logo in the corner that says it is from First Book or it's a First Book edition, so it was really inexpensive which is awesome. And then also by Jeff Kinney, I have a couple of his newer books. These are The Diary of an Awesome Friendly Kid and Rowley Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Adventure. So the first two books in this series. I don't actually know when these came out, but I know that they are fairly new, I believe. So my kids will be excited for those. The next graphic novel I picked up is this one. This one I had seen in a Scholastic Flyer and I knew we had to have it. This one is called Twins. And again, it's more of a comic book style graphic novel. My autofocus is being a little iffy. So this book is one that I'm really excited to read and I know my students will be really excited to read this as well. Again, the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. And this is one where it's a couple of middle school age twins who have a lot in common besides just being twins. Like they, it says usually participate in the same clubs, enjoy the same foods and are partners on all of their school projects. But just before the girls start sixth grade, Francine becomes Fran. So she changes her name and kind of changes her identity and wants to become her own person. So then it just kind of feels to Maureen, who is the other twin, like they are drifting apart. So this is the story of those two twins and it looks so good. I just feel like that cover is so captivating. I absolutely love that. The next book I had to pick up was Raina Tel Telgemeier. I never know how to say Raina's last name. I believe it's Telgemeier. I need to double check that and I meant to do that before I filmed this video, but I didn't. So don't come for me if I am wrong, but this is drama and my students love Raina Telgemeier. Like to say they love her is honestly an understatement. Like they are obsessed with anything she does. They love guts, they love smile, they love sisters, like they love those books. And so of course I had to pick this one up. I actually had this one my first year of teaching and it mysteriously went missing like books sometimes do. 
<laughs> and so anyways, I wanted to get a new copy of this one. And so I'm so excited to have this one now. My kids are gonna absolutely love that. And the next graphic novel that I got is one of the I Survived graphic novels. So my students love the I Survived books. Absolutely, absolutely adore that series as a whole. But the fact that now she's putting together these graphic novels based on her stories is absolutely amazing. They love these. We have, I believe, one of these already in our classroom library and I can't keep it on the shelf. The kids just love to check that one out. So that one will be an awesome addition to our library. The next one is from Dave Pilkey. This is from his newest series, which is Cat Kid Comic Club. He is the author of the Dogman series, which we love in my classroom. And it goes to show we love that series so much. I have a couple of Dogman books here too. I have Brawl of the Wild and Lord of the Fleas that we're adding to our classroom library. My kids cannot get enough of Dave Pilkey. They love his books. His books are always really funny and the kids can get through them fairly quickly. And so they always really enjoy those. Another series I'm really excited to add to my classroom library is the Hilo series. So I have the first two books in this series. The first one is Hilo, the boy who crashed to earth. And the second one is Hilo, saving the whole wide world. I've heard really good things about this series. I have not read it personally myself, but my students love graphic novels and I know they will enjoy this one. And then the last graphic novel that I got, oh, I'm so excited about this. I mentioned this in one of my last vlogs, I believe. This one is called White Bird. This is by RJ Palacio who is the author of Wonder. This is a Wonder companion story, however, it's kind of loosely a companion story because this one is actually historical fiction and it goes through, I believe, Julian's grandmother's eyes or Julian's grandmother's story. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know all the details on this, but I can hold up the back for you, I suppose, so you can see that if you're interested. But this one looks just absolutely phenomenal. This book is like humongous though. Like look at that compared to Hilo, which is like a fairly big book as well. This one is like almost picture book size. So anyways, huge, but I'm excited to read this one and I know my students will really enjoy this as well. I'm a big fan of RJ Palacio's writing, and so I'm sure this is a really good one. Next, I have a few different historical fiction books. The first one is Mary and the Trail of Tears, a Cherokee removal survival story. And this is from the Girls Survive series, which I just stumbled upon recently. And I was able to find this one on first book and I was really, really impressed with how it looked. And if I end up liking this one, there are a bunch of other ones in the series as well. So I'm excited to read this one and have my students read it as well. Historical fiction is one of my absolute favorite genres, hands down, and this one seems like a really, really important book to read. So I'm very excited about that. And then I have a couple of books from Jennifer A. Nielsen, and I'm so excited about these. I've read both of these, I love both of these, and I know my students will love them as well. I just recently finished Words on Fire. I had checked it out from my local public library, and this book is phenomenal, like phenomenal. Seriously, this was one of the best books I read in all of 2020. It was so good. I was just so invested in this book. I could hardly put it down. Like I just felt like I had to keep reading this. And I read this in I think two days, I'm pretty sure. And I just absolutely loved it. I mean, she just has such a beautiful way of writing where you feel like you're in the story with the characters. This book is about a girl named Audra, and at the very beginning of the book, this might be a little bit of a spoiler, but it happens like right away, so not too badly. At the very beginning of the book, Audra's mom and dad are arrested, and she knows that her mom and dad have been keeping something from her, but she doesn't know what that is. And anyways, the whole book is just kind of following Audra on her adventure of trying to find her parents or figure out what has happened to her parents while also following in her parents' legacy. So anyways, such a good book. I seriously might read this one again pretty soon because I loved it so much. And then A Night You Divided, I definitely need to read this one again because it's been a while. I read this one when it first came out, I believe it was back in 2015. So anyways, this one was really, really good. Like I said, it's been a while since I read this one and I honestly feel like if I try to remember it, I might get it mixed up with other books I've read since then because I do read so much historical fiction, but I really enjoyed this one and I know that my students will really like this as well. This next book kind of loosely fits into the historical fiction, but it's not really fiction. It's more of like a biography, I guess. I didn't really know where to put it, so we're gonna stick it right here. <laughs> this is Becoming Muhammad Ali 
which is by James Patterson as well as Kwame Alexander. And oh my gosh, look at this book. Like, come on, how can you not want to read that? This is the true story of Muhammad Ali and how he came to be. I believe it follows his like young life, like him as a child through like early adulthood maybe. And I'm really excited for this one. And I saw this again in Scholastic and just knew that this was something we needed to have in our classroom. Also, it's written in verse which I love and I know a lot of my students really enjoy as well. So super excited to have this one. So the last category that I have is probably my biggest one and it is realistic fiction. I have a ton of books in this category so I'm gonna try to go through them fairly quickly. Okay, so the first book that I have in this category I actually think might have belonged in the fantasy category so I apologize, I didn't know enough about this book to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this one might be fantasy now that I'm reading the inside cover. This book is about a 10 year old boy and his family is very poor and he ends up going to the house of another child on I believe it's Christmas and anyways he is in this beautiful house where they have everything they need and more and he ends up winning some prizes and stuff to take home. I don't know the whole backstory for that but anyways he ends up losing everything and then has to try to go back to his family knowing of what could have been and then there's some other trials and stuff I honestly don't really know that much I just read the inside cover but this one was recommended to me on Amazon and it looked good the next book from this pile is called the other boy I don't know a whole lot about this one either so I'm just gonna read the back cover it says 12 year old Shane Woods is just a regular boy he loves pitching for his baseball team working on his graphic novel and hanging out with his best friend Josh but Shane is keeping something private something that might make a difference to his teammates to Josh and to his new crush Madeline and when a classmate threatens to reveal his secret, Shane's whole world comes crashing down. It will take a lot of courage for Shane to ignore the ridicule and hate and show the world that he's still the same boy he was before. But in the end, those who stand beside him may surprise everyone, including Shane. So that is this book, it sounds really good. The next book is called The Real McCoys. This one is a mystery detective type book, which is always a fun genre to read, especially in middle grade. The next one is a series book, it's called Astrid and Apollo and the Happy New Year. I believe this is a pretty new series. I haven't seen any other books in this series just yet. This will definitely be a quick read for many of my students if you look at the length of it. It's very, very short, so they could get through that fairly quickly, which is awesome. A lot of my students really enjoy those books, even just as like a palette cleanser after they've read some longer books. It's nice to just read one that's short and sweet and to the point. And going with that, I have three books in the Sofia Martinez series. And these ones, I believe it does not matter the order that you read them. At least that's what I found so far. Like they don't have numbers on them. So anyways, I have those three and she just looks absolutely stinking adorable. So I'm super excited to have those. And then the next series I found on first book, I have books one through six in the Zoe and Sassafras series. And oh my gosh, how stinking cute are Zoe and Sassafras. I'm really excited to read these myself. I actually haven't read these yet, but I've heard really good things about them. The next book is another series book. This is Kina Ford and the Field Trip Mix-Up. This is actually the second book in the series. I believe there's three in the series, I wanna say. And just look how cute she is. Like, come on, have to get it. She's adorable. And then the last short chapter book series that I have in this stack at least is Mindy Kim. And I have books, let's see, one, two, three, and four. So one through four in the series. I've read the first one in the series before and I really enjoyed it. It's just a cute quick read. And Mindy Kim is just super cute. And again, these books will just be kind of quicker reads for a lot of my students. And then, ha, huh, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> this next book, I don't really know enough about either to know if it's realistic fiction or fantasy, but I'm pretty sure it's realistic fiction. On the inside cover, it says that the main character is 12-year-old Sophia Wallace, and she is having some memories of her childhood, just kind of here and there type memories. And I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I'm guessing her life has maybe changed dramatically, and so she's kind of having these flashbacks maybe from her childhood. Um, not that she's not still a child, she still is a child, but she's having <laughs> some memories from earlier in her childhood. It says that her mother is not not in her life and the only memories that she has of her are just a few scant ones throughout the years and that she keeps them close so I'm interested in reading this one like I said I haven't really heard a whole lot about this one but it looks really good the next book is one of my most highly anticipated ones I'm really excited to read this this is called for black girls like me and this is not technically a memoir though I did see an interview with this author and she had said that she wrote this book because this was the book that she needed when she was a child 
So she, the author, was adopted into a transracial family where she was being raised by a family of people who didn't look like her and she would often get questions about it and it really was difficult for her to develop her identity as a black woman being in a transracial family and often getting questions about her family that she didn't really know how to answer. And so anyways, the main character in this book was also adopted into a transracial family and so this is kind of her experience while also not being a memoir if that makes sense so it's not like her exact story but it's the story that she feels that she needed and that just sounds phenomenal so i'm really excited to read that the next book is another one that looks so 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 good this one i teared up while i was watching the book trailer though so i have a feeling i will cry when i read this book this is called land of the cranes so this story is about this little girl and she's nine years old living in the United States and I'm not sure if it's her entire family or just her father but at least part of her family is undocumented and she comes home from school one day and finds that her father has been deported and so it's the story of her family and this immigration process and being detained by ICE and just these horrific horrific things that are real and that are really painful to think about but things that are so necessary to think about and know about and so anyways I'm really excited to read this book. I have a feeling it's going to be very, very powerful. So that is all for this haul video. I have some other books right now that I have in a box in my back room that I haven't gotten around to organizing just yet. So if you would like to see another book haul coming up soon, definitely let me know in a comment below if that's something that you'd be interested in. This took me so long to film. I'm looking at my camera right now and I realize this just took me over an hour to film. So I'm hoping I can cut this footage down, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in a comment below so I know if you want to see more of these. Give this video a thumbs up so that tells me that you enjoyed it and then also it helps to reach other people as well. Also, please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed already. I would love to have you back here and if you press that post notification bell, you will be notified every time I post a new video. I don't have a schedule right now for Vlogmas. I'm just kind of posting when I feel like posting and when I'm able to find time to post, but it has been a lot extra. So if you turn on that post notification bell, you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. Definitely let me know in a comment below your favorite middle grade novel that you've read recently, or it could be your all-time favorite as well. I'm always looking for new books to read, and my students really enjoy those recommendations as well. So definitely drop that in a comment below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!